Let's talk about now what constitutes a good life and how to build it. I've got some things for you to consider by the time we finish here today, so take good notes. I've got a wide range of subjects that I want to cover, and let's get started. First of all, we're engaged here in the process of self-education. Self-education. Accelerated self-education can mean so much to your life. If you get serious about the chance and about the opportunity, that's why you got to spend the money, got to spend the time, and got to go wherever ideas are being shared for the accelerated chance for your self-education to be meaningful to your future. Self-education. Here's a key phrase. It's not what happens to us that mostly determines our future. It's what we do with what happens. What happens has been happening for the last 6,000 years. Opportunity mixed with difficulty. The chances have come and gone. The spring has come and disappeared. The summer is here and then it moves on. The harvest is here and whatever the harvest is, that is soon finished. And the dark night of winter comes, we get through that, now comes the next spring. The drama of life is continually unfolding. And the circumstances of life are about the same now as they probably were 6,000 years ago. People trying to get along, people trying to blend their talents together, build a country, build a community, raise their families, make life meaningful. That's been happening for the last 6,000 years. But at this moment in life, faced with some of the same challenges, same circumstances, same things, here's the big question. What can we do about it? What can we do with it? And we've got a chance to do something remarkable. We've got a chance better than anybody else to gather up information, send it out there so that people can make wiser choices and make their lives probably more meaningful in the short period of time we've got to be on the spinning planet than any other individuals have had for the last 6,000 years. We've got the chance to do that. But what I want to talk about here today is how you and I can personally, personally, Gather up information so that we can make wiser and wiser choices about what to do with our own personal lives. What to do with this opportunity, yes. I'm going to talk a little bit, a little bit about recruiting. I'm going to talk about, you know, why multi-level, why network marketing. Uh, I'm going to talk about, you know, a full range of things. But this is the big drama for us here at this moment. What can we do about our own personal lives? How we feel about it. Our own maturity about it. We've arrived at a pretty good time here. I've been around for a while. You've been around for a while. We've got some experience. Uh, you know, we've been out there. You've been touching the people. You've been conducting meetings. You've gotten some feedback. Uh, you've been wrestling with the problems. You know, you've been expanding the opportunity. We've now got some stuff to work with. We've got some stuff that we can refine. Here's a good phrase Mr. Schof gave me when I met him all those years ago. He said, what's easier to refine is experience versus conversation. Somebody says, well, if I go out and tell people this, what about this, what about this, what about this? Finally, you have to say, John, why don't you just go out there and talk to people and come back and tell me what's happened? It's easier to refine experience than it is conversation. Because conversation can go on for a day. It can go on for a week. It can go on for a month. You know, you can play the what if game. What if they said, and then what if I said, and what if he did? And what if I didn't, and what if he did, and what if they did, and what if this? And you can develop the scenario on and on and on. Here's what you have to do to sort short change all that. Go get some experience. And then come back and say, here's what I said. And here's what he said. Here's what I did. Here's what they did. Now we can start refining it and make it meaningful to you. So we've got some experience now. You have not come from empty rooms. You've not come from an empty life. Uh, you have not come empty-headed. Uh, you have not come, you know, just brand new saying, what's this all about? I mean, you've been out there, so you know what it's about. You know how it plays in Peoria, as they say in uh, the political world. Uh, you know what the feeling is now on Main Street and some of the side streets, uh, because you've been out there. You've talked to the people. Uh, you know, you've gathered up some business. You've got it underway. So what a good time to get together and see if we can't refine our experiences. So let's talk about that. First of all, you must be interested in your own personal future. Before you help anyone else, you've got to take care of yourself. I used to use the old expression, you take care of me, I'll take care of you. Found out how short-ended that was. Here's how I changed it to read. I'll take care of me for you. 
if you'll take care of you for me. I'll take care of me. I'll develop myself for you. If I become 10 times wiser, 10 times stronger, 10 times better than I am at the moment, think of what that will do for our friendship. So the best way I can help you is to help myself. The best way I can help you to grow is to grow myself, right? The best way I can help you out of the ditch is for me, first of all, to get out of the ditch and then see if I can't lend a helping hand to reach down there where you are and give you a helping hand, get you out of the ditch. So we must be self-interested, but self-interest must be enlightened. Take these notes. This helped me all those years ago that my own self-interest was okay. That if I was interested in myself, my life, my future, if I was interested in my health, if I was interested in myself, what life was going to mean for me, I found out that was okay, okay as long as I became enlightened in the process. And the final end of the enlightenment has to be this. Every Everybody wins. And if you'll take that into account, it's okay to be self-interested if everybody wins. And I've just got a few notes for you to take here. Some of you that have been through my leadership before, we talked a little bit about this, but let me just refresh your memory. Enlightened self-interest is okay as long as everybody wins. And here's some unique ideas along that line. The first one is, if you wish to be great, have great accolades, great trophies to put on your mantle, plaques to put on the wall, reputation and accolades from your peers, that's fine. Here's how you get it, though, in an enlightened way, and that is at the service of others. Greatness at the service of others. Greed is simply hoping for something at the expense of others, hoping for something for nothing, hoping for more than your share. We don't need any greed. We should legislate against greed when it finds itself in collective places. You're right. Some people should go to jail. We don't need greed in the marketplace, contrary to the movie Wall Street. Greed is not what drives the market. Greed is the evil part that lurks there as a bit of evil lurks in all of us. Because here's the ultimate goal of life. You might make this note here. The ultimate goal in life is to become the most of the good in us and the least of the bad in us. That conflict resides within all of us. So we must drive that dark side of our nature into a small corner. But now if you become enlightened in terms of self-interest, it's okay. Because greatness at the service of others is legitimate. Because everybody wins. He that wishes to be great, let him find a way to serve the many. And there's no better opportunity for all of you than to take hold of this opportunity and reach out and serve the many. I know you're on your way. Just start thinking in larger numbers. That is the key to greatness, figuring out ways to serve the many. Now, here's how you get good at it. Start with one or two. Start with whoever's close at hand. Start with somebody next to you. Start with a neighbor. Start with a friend. Start with a relative. Start with somebody. Pass along an idea to someone that's weary, the ancient prophet said, and you've done the greatest of deeds. Speaking a word in season to someone weary. It means start with one. Yes, I do a seminar. I had, what, 2,500 the other night in Sydney, Australia. But it took me a while to get 2,500 people in a seminar. My first seminars were 25, 30, 40, 50, and 100. If you would have said, right, you got to go talk to 2,500, you wouldn't have been able to find me. I would have <laughs> ran away. Couldn't have talked to that many people. But you can then, people now do come and say, Mr. Owen, you know, one year ago, five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, here's what's happened to me. Thanks a lot. But guess how that all gets started? One at a time to begin with. If you sit down with someone tomorrow morning and have breakfast, and recommend a book, recommend an idea, pass along something to them, they may well come back a year later and say, here's what's happened to me. And you know where it all got started? That breakfast we had the other morning when you said to me, read this book. I'm telling you, that led to another book, led to another book. That led me to take this class. 
and there I met this person, and then this happened, and this happened, and this went on, and guess what? This whole chain reaction started back when you took the time on a Tuesday morning to recommend a book. And you can have just as many accolades as I have. Yes, I've been out there for a while. Yes, my audience is larger than yours. But I'm telling you, where you get the practice is one-on-one. One-on-one. I love to talk one-on-one. I'm probably even better in smaller groups than I am in larger groups. I'm a lot more animated when the room is small, when there's just a few. In my enterprises, a lot more animated. I'm a lot more conservative at this podium. I'm a lot more conservative when the audiences are this large. But when the room is small, Maybe once in a while you might have a chance to get in on one of my small rooms <laughs> where I let it all hang out. <laughs> but anyway, touching people one at a time to get the practice. Here's how you get the practice to speak to a thousand. You speak to one and you speak to two and you speak to three and you speak to five. But here's what you must do. Speak with the intent of getting better. So that when the occasion calls for you to speak to a hundred, you'll be ready. When it calls, when the occasion calls for a thousand, you'll be ready. Ready to serve the many. That's where fortune is. It is easy to earn a fortune if you render fortunes of service. And it's called legitimate fortune. You don't have to apologize for it. You don't have to feel bad about it. If you have served that many, then you deserve the fortune. You deserve the mega return. If you wish to be great, find a way to serve the many. Here's the next self-interest tip. To be ruler over many, you must be faithful with the few. To be ruler over many. Some of you have got visions here now of building a big organization, and well, you should have. With this opportunity, there's no reason why you cannot. Think in terms of 10, and then 50, and then 100, and then 500, and then 1,000. Uh, before too long, there's going to be some of you, your own organization, when you call a meeting, will be this size. I want to have a chance to drop by when just your organization's key people represents a room full of people just like this. That's going to be an awesome experience for you. But here's what I'm asking you to do. Earn it. Earn the privilege of having an organization of key people this big. I'm telling you, people sitting in this room right now, it won't be long until you will have earned the right to have this many key people in your class. And if I get a chance to come and pay you honor, I will be happy to do that. I love to watch people grow. I love to watch them change. I love to watch them pick up the challenge. Some of you I've known now for just a little while, and already you're making changes. Right? When we get people new, I'm telling you, it's interesting. Right? They're scared when they start. Stand up. Forget their name couldn't talk for a minute if they had to. Now it's hard to get them off the platform. <laughs> Be faithful when the amounts are small. Next, to understand that life responds to deserve, not to need. That is the key. Once you understand that little twist of refined education, that life responds to deserve, not to need. The key is to not present your need to life. The key is to present your skills to life. Present your skills to the marketplace. Guy goes to get a job and he says, well, I need this and I need this and I need this and I need this. And the marketplace says, could we please talk to somebody else? This guy's got too many needs. So here's the key. Present your skills. Present your willingness. Present your eagerness to the marketplace. Don't present your illness. Don't present your need. Don't present your wants to the marketplace. The marketplace is not interested in what you want. They're interested in what you contribute. And if you switch around and say, I'm going to whisper my wants to the people who understand, and I'm going to share my skills with a marketplace who needs my services. So life responds to deserve, not to need. The great law of the universe does not read, if you need, you will reap. Here's how it reads. If you plant, you will reap. Finding ways to plant. That's what this session is all about. Finding some extra ways to plant more diligently, to plant more efficiently, to plant more consistently, to plant more enthusiastically, to refine the planting until a little planting now yields a lot bigger harvest than a lot that was carelessly done maybe six months ago. That's what this is all about, the refinement of your time, the refinement of your activity. But here's the key. 
Bring your seed to the marketplace. Not your need. Hide your need and show your seed. Bring your skills. The marketplace will respond. The need is already there. We don't have to worry about the need. Somebody once gave this secret to success. Let me give it to you. It's in a few simple parts. Here it is. Number one, if you want to be successful, find a great human need. Find a great human need. Now, we could go through a long list of human needs, right? Humans need liberty. Humans need food. Humans need shelter. Humans need information. Humans need a support system, especially in those early years. Humans need friendship, camaraderie. Here's a major one. Humans need enterprise. We were meant for enterprise. Old Testament says what? Six days labor, one day rest. That is a clear indication. Humans were meant for enterprise. We were meant to make something of what we've been presented with. Seed, soil, sunshine, rain, miracle of life. We were meant to see what we could do with opportunity. See what we could do um, with an economy. See what we could do with chances. That's what life is all about, enterprise. So if you wish to be successful, find a great human need. Humans need dignity. Humans need self-esteem. Humans need good health to sustain themselves for as long as they can possibly live. Humans need to think beyond themselves. Long list of human needs. But the secret to success says, find a great human need. Then here's the second part. Then find the answer. Now, how can we find the answer? And here's what's exciting. When genius minds get busy, they find an answer. When minds of experience get busy, answers are on the way. When the genius goes to work, you can expect a masterpiece. When a genius begins his task, you can expect a corporate work of art. When genius begins to work, you can expect harmony and symphony. When genius goes to work, good health is soon to follow. When genius goes to work, organizations can be created. Politically, the country can be stable if genius goes to work. If genius rests, if genius is wasted, if genius is not employed, we all suffer. So thank God for the genius that comes and finds an answer to the great human need. Now, here's the third part. Number one secret to success is find a great human need. Number two is to find the answer. And here's number three, to take the answer in quality and quantity of service to the marketplace. To take the answer in quality and that's up front here. Quality service. That's got to be up front with you. Quality service. A good idea in the hands of a careless person does not serve the country well. A good idea in the hands of someone who lets it slip, lets it drift, uh, tarnishes it with immorality, I'm telling you, does not serve the country well. But a good idea in careful hands. A good idea interested in quality service. Quality service. And then the next word was what? Quantity, really pouring it on. See how many numbers you can put together. See how many people you can reach. Start thinking in terms of, instead of five, think of 50. Instead of 50, think of 500. Instead of 500, think of 5,000. And soon you'll be able to think of 50,000. You'll be able to think of 5 million. I'm asking you to do that. Find a great human need. Find the answer to the need. Take the answer in quality and quantity of service. And then here's the last part. To as many as you can reach in a lifetime. Why not make a good idea a lifetime quest? As many as you can reach in a lifetime. Now maybe it's a lifetime that you want to participate. But at least an extended vision on out there that calls forth the best in you of training, laboring, developing, finding out what's possible and what you could possibly do with it. Find a great human need, find the answer, take the answer in quality and quantity of service to as many people as you can reach in a lifetime. That we call bringing value to the marketplace. And then if you do that, here's what happens. You deserve the reward. You deserve the fortune. You deserve the return.
you deserve the pay. Be faithful when the amounts are small. But take up a cause, take up a great human need that's already got now a ready answer. The answer is in the making, yes. The answer is in the development stages, yes. The answer is going to be refined, yes. But there's enough of an answer here now to bring great service to the people in the marketplace. Be faithful. Deserve it. And the return will be yours.